what I want to talk about today is uh, back pain and why we develop back pain. A uh, common uh, problem, people developing pains in the back, probably all of us have experienced at some point or other. And what I found over the years is uh, through my shiatsu and macrobiotic understanding is that um, we can understand, usually we can understand very well why people have developed back pain in a certain part of the back and um, also things that we can do to alleviate it. Especially when people have a chronic uh, back pain, that is long-term back pain, in a certain area of the back and may uh, keep getting problems with it. So you could, you know, different ways of looking at back pains, uh, lots of different ways, um, you know, different, uh, kind of different professions, physiotherapy, chiropractics, osteopathy, etc. And of course, all these have some, you know, very valuable insights into what happens with the back. Um, one way you could um, start dividing up back pain is that you could say that some have a, a very definite physical cause. Uh, for example, we might have a back injury, we might have a slip disc, um, we might have um, um, kind of misalignments in the spine, um, and some quite definite um, or um, also uh, bone cancer. You know, so there may be some quite definite uh, physical causes um, of uh, back pain in different areas. Um, some of these, uh, one could work with shiatsu or self-help methods. Um, others, more serious cases, uh, then some Western medical help um, could well be of benefit. But um, an awful lot of back pain, you could say, is more functional. Uh, there's no obvious uh, reason for it. Um, even to the extent, um, I see quite a lot of people, you may know of people who um, have a sudden back pain and they say, well, they just rolled over in bed or they just turned around to, to pick something up uh, and a really kind of harmless action and then they suddenly got a severe. Obviously, in those cases, there was something happening already. Uh, turning over in bed doesn't normally create a severe back pain. Or uh, Obviously, there was something happening already, and uh, it's good to try and understand why that is. So, um, in general, oriental medicine is very good at understanding more functional problems. Um, oriental medicine is focused on understanding the body not only in terms of uh, its uh, how it works physically, mechanically, physiologically, um, um, but also energetically, um, um, based on the idea or the perception that our body not only works because uh, for mechanical, chemical reasons, genetical reasons, um, but also because of the flow of life energy through the body. And the oriental medicine has a very well worked out system for understanding how the energy flows through the organs, through the meridians and so on, how this life energy enlivens us and um, helps the functioning of all the different organs and other functions that are happening in the body. So this understanding could throw a lot of, a lot of light on um, why we develop back pains in different areas. And I hope that uh, I'm going to talk for maybe 20, 25 minutes and then I very much hope that um, some of you will be online and can ask some specific questions about back pains that you've experienced uh, or uh, come across, because uh, that'll make it um, uh, really interesting if you have some practical examples. So um, very often people develop back pain in certain areas. A very simple way of looking at um, um, any kind of muscular pain is that um, it can occur for two different reasons. One is a buildup of tension. Um, and this is what many of us have experienced, especially in our shoulders, in our neck. Uh, these muscles can become very stiff and muscles which are chronically stiff um, can start creating pain because the muscles aren't relaxing. So there's that chronic tension there. Um, so we need to look at the, the reasons why there's that um, chronic tension in certain parts of the body, um, uh, which I'll maybe go into a bit more in a while. Um, and then there's also the opposite case uh, where there's a real weakness in the body, an energetic weakness and a physical weakness. And then uh, the muscles aren't strong enough to support the body. 
and one of the things they may well do in that situation is to uh, is to cramp and this creates a very sharp pain uh, sometimes we may feel this in our intestines you may get um, uh, abdominal cramps uh, in our intestines our intestines are basically muscular tubes smooth muscle rather than uh, striated muscle as in our uh, muscular system uh, but exactly the same thing can happen we can get strong cramps in our intestines a strong sudden pain um, uh, if for example we have a big weakness in our lower back and the body senses that um, there's great danger because if the muscles around the spine are not holding the spine in good alignment then there's the possibility of damage to the spinal cord and serious uh, nervous system problems or nervous system damage so the wisdom of our body is kind of um, to well these muscles these lower back muscles and this can happen in other parts of the body uh, are, are not strong enough right now um, uh, and so the muscles go into a cramp so they want to hold on at all costs um, they want to keep the body aligned at all costs you could say and of course a cramping muscle is painful um, and um, if you feel on that area you may well feel um, you may feel that the muscles are hard and tense um, before they cramp up you may also feel that you know, that that part of the body there's more of like a dull ache a deep ache uh, coming from that weakness um, or emptiness um, uh, in the in the muscle and uh, in the energy flowing through the muscle it can produce more of a deep gnawing kind of ache so why would you know why would you know why would these things develop um something else you know some, one of one of the real strengths of oriental medicine is its holistic approach so whereas in western medicine a back problem may be considered to be mostly a back problem um in oriental medicine they would say well if a problem develops in the back then there must be something going on in other parts of the body as well so i've um i've got this chart here this is from a certain system of uh, shiatsu um, and um, here's a picture of the back um, and basically what is uh, the, the relationship that's that's recognized here is that there's a relationship between the front and the back of our body if there's something happening in the back of our body at a certain level it may well be caused by an imbalance um, either too strong an energy too much tension or a weakness in the energy in the in the front of the body in the organs in the front of the body and this will then translate or you know carry through to the back of the body um, so what do we so if we think about the upper back area here around about the first second and third lumbar um, um, thoracic vertebrae um, this this is at the back of which organ the lungs uh, and particularly this upper part of the lungs so if people develop um, problems in that part of the back then it may well be coming from an imbalance or, or you could say a weakness in the lungs um, um, uh, and when the energy is low in the lungs then the, the energy is low here and then that may that may create uh, a dull aching it may create not usually get cramping up here um, and also it may create physical changes as well so sometimes uh, back pains can be caused you know we, we you know often we look for a physical cause of the pain but often when there's a there's an energetic or a functional imbalance that can create a physical problem um, uh, which then uh, can create further further pain um, so for example if the energy is really low in the lungs and therefore in that um, first second third thoracic vertebrae area of the back then the muscles are weak uh, and then they find it difficult to hold the body in alignment and you're more likely to get some small misalignments uh, in the vertebrae and of course there are various methods of correcting those misalignments adjustments and so on um, but what can easily happen is that there are, they are corrected and it keeps going out because the lung energy is too weak to maintain the um, muscle tone and uh, ligament and tendon strength 
uh, to keep the spine straight. So next area down around four, five uh, and six, thoracic vertebrae. Uh, this is at the back of the heart. Um, so our heart needs energy. Our heart is very active, uh, beating all of our lives, it needs a lot of energy. We can, um, you know, we can have a lot of energy in our hearts or the energy in the heart can, can become depleted. Most commonly, uh, what I and other people see is that it becomes depleted. Then there can be a weakness in this part of the back. And then actually the next area down uh, over uh, the seventh, eighth and ninth thoracic vertebrae is connected to the heart protector or the pericardium. Um, the pericardium is the sac around the heart and protecting the heart. So this whole area from the fourth down to the ninth uh, thoracic vertebrae is very related to what's happening with the heart. And we see a lot of back curvature, the back curving forwards at that point in the back. Actually, that's generally not a back problem. It's generally not due to a weakness uh, or some change in the back. It's due to a weakness in the heart and pericardium energy. When the energy is weak here, then our body tends to collapse around it. When the energy is strong here, that helps to open the chest. And this, this area is a little more prominent. Some people, this area is very sunken. Um, and very often this can have a knock-on effect uh, on this middle part of the back. Then coming further down, um, uh, 10th, 11th and 12th thoracic vertebrae. This, um, um, we're getting, you know, middle, lower middle back. Um, in oriental medicine, this is very connected with the, um, the pancreas uh, and the spleen uh, functions. So if they are uh, imbalanced, uh, particularly if the spleen energy becomes very low, much more likely to get a back pain in that area. Then uh, coming low down into the lumbar, lumbar area of the back, the lower back, probably the most popular area for getting back pain. Um, so um, especially around kind of third, fourth, fifth um, lumbar vertebrae and also down over the sacrum. So um, what, is, what is in front of these? Um, um, well, um, uh, not exactly in front of here is the, is, are the kidneys. Actually, the kidneys are higher up. But interesting, interestingly, as an embryo, our kidneys actually started off down at this level and gradually rose up um, uh, to their current position. So definitely there's a strong relationship between this lower back area uh, and the, kid and the kid kidney energy in the body and over the sacrum with the bladder energy. So these two organs, um, um, if there's a weakness in the kidney bladder energy, then um, weakness in this lower back and uh, people are very likely to then get lower back pain. Um, also, also that lower back, is um, uh, in the front of the body are the intestines, the small intestine and the large intestine. So in this uh, diagram, we have this area in the middle relating to the small intestine and on the outside to the large intestine. So if there's a lot of weakness in the intestines, and people are having a lot of intestinal problems, again, that can create weakness across that lower back area. So worst thing, low kidney, bladder and intestinal energy that, that's going to create really weak lower back and then we're much more likely to get uh, lower back pain. And we're lifting, turning, or maybe we just bend down to uh, tie up our shoelace or something like that. And uh, you know, we get a severe back pain because of, of, the, of the weakness that's already there in the lower back. Um, uh, a few other organs here, um, more on the right side of the body. Um, we have areas relating to the liver and gallbladder because, of course, our liver and gallbladder is here. So if we're developing problems here, it may, um, uh, that may translate to the back uh, at the same level. Um, in general, uh, the, the most uh, common uh, imbalance in the liver and gallbladder is uh, it's a place that we hold a lot of tension. And then that can create a lot of tension through that middle part of the back, uh, which, uh, which a lot of people suffer from. So we need to find out whether a back pain is created more by tension uh, or more by low energy. Uh, and then we, need, then we can find out well um, uh, which organ is that associated with. 
Um, and then, of course, we can um, use a variety of treatments or exercises, shiatsu, chiropractic, osteopathy, physiotherapy, etc., uh, to address the problem. Um, um, but there are also things, particularly with chronic long-term back pain, um, uh, which can cause a lot of misery. There are, there are things that we can do to strengthen the various organs in the body. If we've got a lot of problems here, and we can strengthen the lungs. If the problem's a bit lower down, strengthen the heart, heart protector energy, uh, and so on. And this is one of the real strengths of oriental medicine, that it understands not only how to deal with illness, but how to promote uh, strength and health in the different organs of the body. So to illustrate this, I'll maybe talk a little bit about uh, low back pain, because this is just so common. Um, so as I said, this um, uh, when we get um, uh, bad low back pain, generally it's due to a weakness. This, this place in the lower back is supporting uh, the whole of the weight of the torso, the head, the shoulders and the arms, the whole of the upper body. So it's having to work very hard. Um, and it needs to be strong. And um, if we maintain strong kidney uh, energy, um, then this really helps. If our kidney energy becomes weak, um, then um, uh, we're very likely to get low back pains. So I'm gonna talk a bit, little bit about what helps the kidney and its partner in oriental medicine, the bladder, and what can create problems in this area. So the kidneys are seen not only as uh, the organs producing urine, um, but also the place, uh, the, the kidneys and the adrenal glands, uh, where we store uh, long-term deep energy in the body. They're like our batteries. Um, and if we have a good amount of, any, a good amount of kidney energy, uh, then we have more energy to do things in our life, um, be creative, have fun, work, um, whatever, uh, meet challenges. Um, when the kidney energy becomes low, then we feel more exhausted, tired. Uh, we may get some more general muscle ache uh, we may get fibromyalgia, we may get chronic fatigue, uh, and all those kind of low energy type problems. Um, so, um, how to uh, how to maintain uh, strong kidney energy, or if we if we've got a weak lower back that keeps causing problems, and um, uh, and we want to strengthen our lower back uh, uh, via strengthening our kidneys, uh, what what should we do? So what we have to do is be careful to, um, to increase and maintain our deep internal energy. This is a little bit of a foreign concept in modern Western culture. Uh, in, uh, in, um, in Oriental medicine, there's a tradition of how do we maintain this deep internal energy in the body. Um, um, in the West, we tend to think, well, you know, let's have a good time. Let's use up our energy. Um, let's uh, overwork, let's party, let's use recreational drugs, let's use, let's use stimulants, you know, coffee, sugar, uh, etc. Uh, because we want to have more fun, we want to have more energy. But what we don't realize is that if we overstimulate, it's really long term, uh, caffeine, alcohol, sugar, uh, etc. Um, we're not getting free energy. Uh, it's not that those foods give us free energy. Actually, what's happening is that we are that, and it would bring that energy up from the kidneys and the inside of the body to the outside, so we experience more energy. But actually, what we're doing is draining our internal uh, um, energy reserves. This is why alcohol is actually defined as a, a depressant, um, because uh, a little bit of alcohol may cheer us up, but if we start drinking large amounts of alcohol, how do you feel next day? <laughs> you definitely don't feel more alive. You feel more dead <laughs> because you've you've um, drained some of your kidney energy and it takes time for that to build up again. The same thing with frequent uh, caffeine use uh, and also recreational drug use. You know, to start off with, can feel very good, stimulates the energy, long-term use. People can start experiencing the opposite, you know, that they're becoming um, uh, increasingly exhausted. Um, at that point, it can be very tempting to keep having the caffeine or the sugar or the stimulant uh, to keep going. Um, but unfortunately, the more you do that, then the more it drains your kidney energy, and then you may end up having a real 
deep kidney energy, uh, inner energy depletion problem, uh, such as chronic fatigue syndrome or chronic lower backache, um, uh, depression, emotional depression, um, uh, nervous breakdown, you know, etc. Like feeling overwhelmed, you know, etc. Um, so um, to maintain or to strengthen our kidney energy, some things we need are a good amount of sleep, particularly if our kidney energy has become depleted, we definitely need at least eight hours, maybe nine hours, maybe good. Um, if we're having problems sleeping, take a siesta during the day, take a siesta after lunch if you can, or the weekends or days off, just sleep, you know, lie in in the morning, have a much longer sleep. We need sleep in order to replenish our inner energy. Um, then we can also replenish our energy with deep breathing. Many of my classes I teach how to breathe into the abdomen. When we bring it, when we breathe down here, we're also bringing energy into our kidneys, the energy from the air. Uh, a lot of people breathe quite shallowly into their lungs and chest, and this deprives the kidneys uh, of key. Um, so we need to learn to breathe deeply. Uh, a moderate amount of exercise where we're breathing deeply and using the body helps to replenish the body's reserves. Um, and then we need to make sure that we're not giving out too much energy. We're not overworking, over-partying, over-exercising. Uh, yep, it's possible to over-exercise. Exercise is a good thing. Uh, in general, um, we can under-exercise, but we can also over-exercise. And over-exercising pushing ourselves too hard um, can uh, deplete our internal energy. Our internal energy is not exhaustive, um, it's not endless. Uh, we have a certain amount and we need to look after it. So we need to learn energy management. Uh, if we're feeling really tired and drained, then what is the body telling us? Not that we need another telling us that uh, we need to lie down and have a rest. So important to listen to the body and um, and when you can, to get more rest, get more sleep, um, etc. Another way of getting more energy in the body are certain foods. Certain foods hold a lot of energy and bring energy into the body. Uh, number one, minerals. And um, where, do we, where do we get a lot of minerals from? Um, a very good way of taking minerals, which includes salt, but you know, all other minerals, which basically come from rocks. A very good way of taking minerals is in a soup, um, particularly a broth soup. Um, uh, traditional broth soups made around the world in the Far East might be a miso soup, a shoyu broth, a tamari broth, but we could also make a, a, a broth soup with a herb salt. Um, and you could also include the bone soups uh, in this category, which uh, in putting some either some fish or some chicken bones or other animal bones um, if you eat those, um, that creates uh, a very deep energy, which really helps um, uh, replenish uh, the uh, kidney kidney energy. But even a you know a vegan veg you know, vegetarian uh, simple vegetable soup, uh, very good to put seaweeds in, uh, a little wakame, dulse, etc., because that adds a lot of minerals, strengthening for the kidneys. Um, and then adding something salty at the end, plus a lot of good quality vegetables, so minerals are coming out of uh, the vegetables as well. So basically what we're drinking is a hot, mineral-rich liquid. Very good for strengthening the kidney key. Uh, so having some kind of broth soups every day, very good for kidney energy. Um, more long-cooked food, so there's a whole uh, kind of fashion these days in eating raw foods or very lightly cooked foods. That's, um, that's at one end, uh, more cleansing, very light effect on the body. Uh, if people have very congested, um, tense body, they can feel better eating that very light food. But if people are very empty, they're up the other end. And uh, people that have tried eating a lot of raw foods and are eating a lot of fruit, because the fruit is healthy, supposedly. Um, and uh, they feel much worse. They feel colder, less energy and so on. So some people need more lightly cooked, more raw food. Other people need more long cooked food. Uh, so that's kind of long cooked whole grains, um, um, especially whole grains and, uh, and beans uh, strengthen the kidney energy because these are seeds. 
they have a lot of life energy in they can grow a whole new plant um, um, so long cooking things like um, uh, brown rice uh, millet uh, barley uh, wheat spelt um, buckwheat etc uh, quinoa um, and also long cooking beans especially black turtle beans and uh, kidney and uh, aduki beans uh, with seaweed and with some added minerals from salt, shoyu, miso, etc. Uh, it can really help draw more energy into the kidneys. Um, then we also need some light vegetables, some light quality to go with it, um, but not too much fruit. So I said fruit is kind of healthy, it's, it's considered healthy, but actually fruit is soft, watery and cooling. So if we are tense and hot, then eating more fruit is a very good idea. But if we are cold and soft and lacking in energy, then we don't want to eat a lot of fruit, um, especially tropical fruits, um, avocados, bananas, oranges, etc. are really going to cool the body down and make us feel worse. Uh, better to eat some apples, pears, uh, if we're living in a temperate climate or whatever, whatever um, kind of fruits grow locally. Um, also important for the kidneys is keeping this area warm. So what I often recommend for people that um, uh, have low kidney energy and maybe getting a lot of low back pain is to really keep this area warm. So thermal underwear is great. Get the kind of thermal underwear that comes up to, comes uh, you know, comes up here, so it's covering your low back. Um, so so the trouser part comes up to here, and then the top part comes down to here, and then you've got a double layer. Uh, covering your low back, or you could use a haramaki, traditional Japanese oriental um, circular uh, cloth, which to wrap around your kidneys, and also putting heat, a hot water bottle on your kidneys uh, may well be helpful too. So these are some of the ways that we can strengthen our kidney key and to help strengthen uh, our lower backs, so we're much less likely to get lower back problems. Um, and also other problems, I just mentioned uh, sciatica, um, um, where they're shooting pains through the buttocks and down the legs because a nerve is getting pinched um, in this lower back and sacrum area. So why would this happen? Generally, again, because of uh, weak kidney, kidney bladder energy. Um, when this energy becomes weak, then the muscles are weak, then the sacroiliac joint can move a little bit, um, the vertebrae can move around, um, and then a nerve gets pinched, and then we get that really sharp shooting pain down, down the buttock and leg. So again, ver, ver, you know, treating the area of the pain can be useful, uh, particularly treating the meridians that is going down, which is very often the bladder meridian, uh, kidney, sometimes the gallbladder, uh, but also really strengthening this lower back uh, region so it can start supporting itself um, um, uh, much better. Okay, so that, that's a kind of quick run through of hopefully giving you more idea of why you may have um, uh, back pain or um, particularly chronic long-term back pain or, or a current back pain in a certain part of your back. It's um, there may be some physical or other causes, but uh, very often the causes is coming from an imbalance in our internal organs, which then uh, travels through to our back or refers through to our back and uh, creates an imbalance, um, a functional or energetic imbalance in the back. Uh, then the muscles are either too tense or too weak, and then we start developing back pain. Um, um, I think that's probably about enough for now. I hope that gives you a, a more in-depth idea. I've seen in 40 years of giving Shiatsu and giving macrobiotic consultations, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of people with back pain. And um, so it's, you know, it's, quite, it's easy to kind of see these relationships. And it's great to be able to give people some advice on how they can help themselves through their diet, through their lifestyle, etc. Uh, to help alleviate back pains. Um, um, other things which I'm not going to go into now are more direct things. Heat I mentioned can be good, St st stretching exercises can be good, um, 
uh, all kinds of different things you can do by lying on towels to stretch the back or balls to stretch the back or massage the back and so on. Um, uh, but maybe I'll do that another time. So I see there's not... Um, um, uh, so, yep, not so many people on today. Maybe everybody's on holiday. Thank you for your for your um, for your comments heard. Uh, it's nice to uh, it's nice to have you here. I wonder whether you have any question about back pain or any any back pain that you've had recently. Um, um, always interesting to ha have questions, and I know that a lot of people tend to read or listen to these Facebook posts um, after they've been posted. Um, I started doing these at five to six rather than in the evening, so maybe that's not such a good time for people. Uh, maybe I need to go back to doing them in the evening. Um, but uh, yeah, I wonder if Heard or anybody else um, uh, who is listening have any questions about back pain. And I wonder whether the explanation that I've given for, I would say that the, the biggest majority of back pain um, whether that's whether whether that makes sense to you. So let's just wait and see if there are any uh, comments coming. Okay, so no comments coming. So um, so I think what I will do then is to end the session now. Um, um, I'm giving a, a, a short series of. Um, um, lectures on different subjects. So I'll be doing the same again on the next two Wednesdays. Um, okay, Hurt, I can see a question's just come in. So I'll be giving two more talks on the next two Wednesdays uh, in August. Um, take the risk of uh, not everybody being away on holiday. Um, if you have, if you have, you know, I will be doing this probably again in the autumn. If you have specific health problems that you're interested in, or specific areas of healthcare that you're interested in please do uh, send a message or an email. Um, you can always email me um, at the school, um, info at macroschool.co.uk. Um, and uh, I'm always, in, you know, it's always great to have your questions. Um, so, Hurt, you've come back and said your daughter str struggles with back pain since she lifted too much weight at her work in the middle and above. Um, obviously, you know, one thing that's important in our back care is learning how to lift weights. Um, and um, the worst thing we can do, well, uh, or a bad thing we can do for our back is to, uh, to lift mostly with our back where we're curving the back and picking something up and using our, straightening our back to pick something up. Much better. Um, if I to, uh, to uh, bend the legs, keep the back straight, pick something up, keep the back straight, and then lift. Uh, so you're using the strength in your legs. So rather than bending your back, and then using all your back strength to lift. The very worst is bending your back and twisting. So this is where a lot of back pains go. So people are maybe turning around to the side and bending their back. That puts a lot of strain on certain muscles. Um, very easy to pull a muscle uh, if you're if you're uh, uh, twisting at the same time as lifting with your back. Um, so um, um, so if she's still got the back pain, it may be that um, that a muscle has been strained. So a few things that you could try. One way would be by using heat. Um, hot water bottles uh, can be quite nice, uh, but there's a more effective way of creating heat. And that is with something called a salt pack. And uh, to make a salt pack, uh, you need to buy coarse sea salt. So it comes in you know, uh, you know, larger pieces. And, and you put something like about three quarters or, or uh, 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 up to one kilo in a dry frying pan, at high heat, keep turning it over, turning it over so it really gets heated through. Um, 
and when it's really hot it'll start popping then you can turn it off and then you get a small towel uh, an old one because it may get a little bit burnt lay it down flat pour the salt in the middle and then you have to the hot the salt is really hot so you have to make sure none comes out and burns your skin you fold it from the front you fold it from the back from the left side from the right side that way no salt can come out and then you tie it up with a big elastic band or a string or ribbon and then on the underside it is really hot so you can put it on through clothing if it's too hot you can put another towel or something underneath and then put a duvet or a towel or something on the top to to keep the heat in it's a very deep heat very very nice heat uh, can feel very nice when we have a back pain and if you put something over it like a towel or duvet or blanket uh, it may well stay hot for about uh, you know up to an hour so heat may be helpful um, some massage may be helpful um, it helps if you've learned some massage or shiatsu skills um, um, but what I can say simply is to find the place uh, that is most painful and then see what is happening there. It may be that there's a really taut muscle, in which case you can just give some pressure and weight, um, you know, pressure with your palm, with the heel of your hand, maybe with your thumb, and just wait for that, um, that tension to, to release and subside. Um, and that could help reduce, uh, you know, reduce the back pain. On the other hand, if it feels very soft, you know, the, the back feels very soft, it feels like the muscles are not strong, then you could again press maybe more with your palm and have more the image of drawing energy or drawing strength into that part of the back. Um, you may also find that just working around with your thumb um, and finding some little places that may feel sensitive but not overly painful can help draw energy in. So we need to be careful uh, when giving massage or shiatsu or body treatments. If anything is very painful, then that's the body's warning. That could be doing damage, so we need to we need to we need to um, ease off on the pressure and use more gentle pressure. Um, but um, so heat and um, um, some kind of deeper massage uh, could be help could help your daughter. Um, um, uh, recover from her back pain. Um, yeah, so any other questions? Okay, well, we've been going for 40 minutes, so I think I will leave it there. Oh, Claire <laughs> has just jumped in. Um, uh, so, Claire Wiley, nice to hear from you again on an island in Finland. Uh, wonderful, uh, sounds really good. I've just come back from a uh, holiday in Scotland, which was just amazing. So, um, uh, so enjoy being among mountains. Um, but you can say that you often do it salt packs and they help loads. Uh, so thank you very much for that, Claire. Uh, I love salt packs. You know, they're great. This deep heat can be good for any kind of back pain. It can be good for abdominal pains. It can be good for period pains. Anytime when you want deep heat, and really salt packs, uh, the heat goes much deeper than with a hot water bottle. And you can keep reusing the salt. Um, so once you've got your once you've got your salt and your, your towel and your way of wrapping them up, then you just keep it. And then it's just four minutes to heat the salt up again and uh, make a salt pack to put on your body. Uh, very, very nice, especially low back pain. Uh, very, very nice for, uh, for almost every case of low back pain. Okay, so uh, I'm going to finish there. Um, um, if any questions come up you know, when you're watching this <coughs> at a later time, then uh, hopefully they'll pop up in my email and I can answer them. So uh, I wish you all good health and um, enjoy the remainder of the summer if you're in the, in the Northern Hemisphere. And I uh, hope to see you soon.